Welcome back to another episode of 10 in 10, where I show you 10 useful bushcraft and survival tips in around about 10 minutes. Sometimes I go over the mark and you guys get annoyed, but we do our best here at TA Outdoors. Anyway, now I've got to talk really quickly as I've got to keep it to 10 minutes. Let's go. Hedera Helix, Ivy, often looked over in the bushcraft and survival scene, but it has active compounds which can actually be used to make a form of laundry detergent. It gets a bit of a bad reputation for suffocating trees and causing them to die, but it doesn't actually do that, and it certainly brings a lot of benefit to woodland ecosystems. Ivy can support up to 50 different species of wildlife, and with the berries staying on the plant throughout the winter, it's a valuable source of nectar for birds and bees. However, it's not the berries we're interested in. Just to be clear, there are two subspecies of ivy native in Britain, Hibernica, which grows along the ground, and Helix, which climbs up trees. Hedera helix is the one we're interested in. The young, juvenile leaves are quite distinct, with three to five lobes on each leaf. Once it matures, it forms more of a diamond shape with no lobes. These are the leaves we are interested in. A quick note to add, this is not poison ivy. It can be handled with bare hands, and has in fact in the past been used to treat coughs and other bronchial health problems. However, it can be an irritant, so if you want to wear gloves if you have sensitive skin, then crack on. But for me, it doesn't seem to have an effect on my skin. I pick anywhere between 20 to 80 leaves, depending on how much solution I want to make. The active compound we are looking to extract from the leaves is the saponins. The name saponin stems from the Latin word sapo, which means soap. Saponins occur naturally in a number of vegetables, such as spinach, peas and soybeans but ivy contains a higher percentage of saponins than these. To better extract the saponins, tear, rip and break up the leaves and rub them together in your hands. This damages the plant cells that contain the saponins. Then add them to some boiling water and leave them to boil for around 15 minutes. After which, take the pot off the fire and leave to cool. As you gently pour the liquid into a separate container, you can notice the vivid change in colour as the saponins have been released due to being agitated in the boiling water. You can see that by shaking the bottle, the saponins have made the water foam up. Now you've made yourself some entirely natural detergent, which can be used to clean your clothes out in the wild, or even used as a mild soap. It's easy to make and safe for the environment, so you can pour it straight onto the forest floor without worrying about damaging the forest ecosystem. At first glance, this fallen Scots pine tree looks a bit worse for wear, having blown down in a recent storm. Whilst the upper branches will still be useful for fire lighting, the stump itself looks fairly useless in terms of firewood. After all, this is the weak point at which it cracked and fell, so it must be rotten, right? Tree stumps like this conifer often have partially rotten wood, which is referred to as punk wood. It's usually caused by a fungal infection and is very soft and spongy to the touch. Whilst at first it seems useless for lighting a fire, if you have a small metal tin in your kit, you can place the punk wood chunks in the tin and put it on the fire. Make sure you put a hole in the top of the tin for gases to leave. Essentially, the wood is going to char due to the level of heat created inside the tin. But as the punk wood is kept sealed within it, it is starved of oxygen, and therefore it cannot fully burn to flame. Instead, it chars. The moisture within is evaporated and gases burnt up during the process leave through the small hole in the top of the tin. You should see smoke coming out of the hole within minutes. Once this smoke stops billowing out of the hole, the process is complete. Leave it to cool down and you will now have charred wood. This is great for catching a spark from a ferro rod or a flint and steel. You can then add the smouldering ember to a tinder bundle and you have yourself a fire. Better still is you can carry these pieces of wood with you on trips and you'll have multiple opportunities to light a fire. Rubus fruticosus, the blackberry or bramble, a thorny bugger that often entangles around your feet catching you unaware on your sunny summer walks a common wild edible which produces the delicious blackberry fruit in the late summer months. Over winter, it dies back with just a few aging dark green leaves that remain. However, come springtime, it begins to burst into life with multiple new shoots emerging from the stem. These early young shoots are bursting bioactive natural products. They contain antioxidants and antimicrobial properties. You can eat them straight from the stem. However, I'd prefer to steep them in a tea or add them to water. The silver birch is well known for its fire lighting properties. The flammable oils within the outer bark are a go-to for fire lighting in wet conditions. 
However, come springtime, you can make yourself a rather refreshing seasonal beverage by capturing some of the sap that is beginning to rise up the trunk. Tapping a birch tree for sap has been done for hundreds if not thousands of years. There is quite a debate about whether tree tapping can kill off a tree, and in some cases this has happened. However, if done responsibly, I am yet to have a problem doing this. First off, I make a spile. This is simply a long piece of thin material which sticks into the tree and enables the sap to run down and drip into my container. You can buy metal spiles, but I like to just whittle one up quickly. I always make sure that I make the spile from a living branch that was already on the tree that I am tapping. That way, there is less chance of passing any infection or potentially harmful bacteria from other trees into this one. I also make sure to remove all of the bark, as this is where bacteria can build up and cause a problem. If you look closely at this tree, you can actually see where I previously had tapped it for sap about five years ago. The wound has healed up nicely and the tree has been carrying on its normal cycle with no issues. First, I gently tap the tip of my knife into the bark to reach the cambium layer. Then I place the stick in this gap made by my knife and make sure it is pointing slightly downwards. Next, I tie a container to the tree to collect the sap as it runs out. Within minutes, you can see the sap starting to drip. I leave this for a few hours and check back regularly on it. As you can see, there is already over 100 milliliters of sap inside. If left overnight or for a few days, you can collect much more. Now you have yourself some tree juice, packed full of goodness, and it actually tastes incredibly refreshing. If you want, you could also add your bramble shoots to this drink for even more goodness. The Western Red Cedar Tree is one of my favorite conifer trees. It has really distinct foliage with scaly leaves that aren't too dissimilar from dragon scales. The bark has a red hue to it, hence where its name derives from. As it matures, the bark becomes ridged and fibrous, almost hair-like. This bark can be peeled off in layers, and this fibrous inner layer can be a very useful bushcraft resource. If you buff it up in your hands, you'll be able to fluff up these inner fibers and peel away the tough outer bark. If you keep doing this for a few minutes, you'll eventually have a small fibrous tinder bundle. This is ideal for fire lighting, as it should take a spark from a ferro rod very easily. When crushed, the leaves of the western red cedar tree have a distinctly aromatic smell. I find it smells like pineapple. I also find that by crushing the leaves in my hands and rubbing it on the back of my hands and neck has helped to repel mosquitoes and bugs. With research showing the cedar oil made from bark chips and sawdust of the cedar tree showing some evidence of repelling bugs, I sometimes opt for this easier method of just crushing the leaves. However, this is subjective, and whilst it works for me, it might not work for everyone. Be aware that if you have sensitive skin, this might not be advisable for you to try. The gorse bush is a common evergreen shrub found in coastal heathlands and on forest edges. It has nitrogen fixing roots, which means it can grow in poor soils. Whilst it doesn't seem that this shrub has much going for it, due to the large thorn-like needles, it does have striking yellow flowers, which can appear year round depending on conditions at the time. You might notice that these flowers look similar to that of the pea flower, and that is because gorse is in the Fabaceae family, which is the same family as peas. The bright yellow flowers are edible, as are the buds. However, the seeds and seed pods are toxic. The flowers have a unique taste. I find it tastes like coconut and almond. However, it can have a bitter aftertaste. Lonicera periclimenum, honeysuckle, or woodbine as it's sometimes known as. It's a climbing plant often seen in woodlands and hedgerows. It comes to leaf fairly early in the year, and so it's fairly easy to identify amongst the leafless deciduous trees. The flowers give off a sweet fragrance, and both the leaves and flowers contain salicylic acid, which has been used to treat headaches. The berries are toxic and poisonous, so best to avoid those. The bark, however, is interesting. As it matures, it becomes flaky and fibrous. You can peel this off in strips, similar to that of the western red cedar. Using the same process, you can buff it up in your hands to create a tinder bundle, which can take a spark and turn to flame. Again, it's best to make sure to have enough tinder material to get your fire going, as it burns fairly fast. Another widely available tinder at this time of year is bracken. It's easy to identify in winter, as it turns an orange-brown colour when it dies back. Just pick a large handful of leaves, avoiding the main stem. I find one of the best ways to light a fire with bracken is through a traditional flint and steel. Here, I am using a piece of charred cloth to catch the spark from the flint. Once I have a glowing ember, I can place it in the bracken tinder bundle and just add oxygen to build the ember. Create more heat and eventually the bracken will combust. It doesn't take long as the leaves of bracken are so thin. It is a flash tinder though, 
so have your kindling well prepared in order to build your fire. Primula vulgaris, the common primrose, one of the first wooden plants to flower after the long winter months. Both the flowers and the leaves are edible. You can cook the leaves in soup, but my favourite method is to infuse them in a tea. It is a natural sedative and can help you sleep if you suffer from insomnia and anxiety. Extracts from the roots have been used in cough syrups and to treat arthritis. I've experimented plenty with this flower, making all sorts of concoctions. It's a great wild edible, especially in the colder months of late winter, when most wild edibles are yet to show their head. And there you have it, 10 bushcraft and survival tips in roughly 10 minutes. Cheers to all of you who follow the series, I appreciate it. Drop a comment below on what other tips you would like to see in the series. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe and follow the 10 in 10 video playlist, which is in the description box below. See you in the next one.